Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. Tonight's video isn't really going to have a theme. I'm going to talk about some stuff that I've been sampling lately. Just kind of in an off-the-cuff way. I've been sampling a lot of stuff lately. Mostly, uh, I've been sampling a lot of things from Cartier uh, and its in-house perfumer, Mathilde Laurent. Uh, but also some other things that I've been enjoying. I got sent some uh, samples from Maya Niji. Uh, one thing from Guerlain, something from Healy that I already owned. Uh, a few other things, maybe. We'll see how far I get. Um, but I'm just going to go through and kind of, in no particular order, it's after work. I'm a little tired, um, but I want to talk about some of these. Okay, so first up, I want to talk about two perfumes from Maya Niji. Uh, my friend Kelly sent me these two samples. So Kelly, a huge thank you. Um, I've really enjoyed trying these. Uh, if I haven't mentioned it already, it's Nordic Cedar and Venige by Maya Niji. And um, I'll start with Nordic Cedar. I have it on a strip here um, because Venige is apparently a flanker of Nordic Cedar. Uh, what I get from Nordic Cedar is a big blast of authentic cedar wood, um, as opposed to, I think, often in perfumery when you see cedar in a, a note pyramid. They really just mean a big chunk of Isoe Super. Versus here, I get something that smells genuinely very natural. Um, it smells, I don't want to say it smells like a Lowe's Lumberyard, but something slightly more elevated, like a brand new construction house with like the studs and the drywall and the new floors installed, but no one's been in the house yet. Uh, it's very clean, fresh, it's sharp. On the strip, I really like it a lot. Um, on my skin, it didn't as well for me. It was a little bit too um, like clean girl aesthetic. It also has shades of um, Santal 33 by Le Labo, which I'm not a huge fan of. Um, I think the interesting thing here is the two main notes I'd say in Nordic Cedar are a very bracing cedar as well as um, a creamy nutty cardamom. Uh, and I really like that note, but these two things are combining here in a kind of a minimal way to give me a sense of like a very high-end candle. Uh, and for some reason, like I, I think I'd love for my house to smell like Nordic Cedar. Like it's a really, really, really fabulous scent, but I don't really want my body to smell like Nordic Cedar. Um, I have kind of a like a phobia of perfumes that smell like candles. On the other hand, and I have here Venige, I really enjoyed Venige as both a smell and something that I could actually wear. Um, so it's there's a very clear line between Venige and Nordic Cedar. Uh, Venige is just basically how the house describes it is Nordic Cedar plus vanilla. Um, but to me, really, it's like an improved Nordic Cedar. Uh, vanilla is the thing that I think was missing the third kind of accord to make it a complete perfume. This smells much more finished, or not finished, but much more palatable, um, much more mysterious in a way. It's um, got a smell to it that is not gourmand. It's not a gourmand vanilla, but it definitely reminds me of the smell of like uncooked pastry, like a yeasty smell, like the cedar and vanilla and the cardamom combined uh, to have this like kind of doughy, yummy but not gourmand because it's not super sweet this perfume uh it's got a doughy yeasty kind of smell um i find it really intriguing uh i'm not really much for vanilla perfumes i don't think i own anything that's kind of like a straight vanilla um but especially at this price point these are priced really well these would be contenders or venige would be a contender at least so thanks kelly i appreciated this one Okay, next one I'll talk about is Aqua Allegoria Forte Rosa Palisandro by Guerlain. Uh, this is like a 7.5 mil mini that I got on eBay. Uh, I'm really frustrated by how difficult it is to sample Guerlain in this country. I mean, um, I live in Los Angeles. It's a huge metro area, and I don't think there's anywhere that sells anything near the full range of Guerlain's. Um, so they're very hard to sample here, um, but I picked this one up because it sounded interesting. It's an Aqua Allegoria Forte, which means it has like a stronger woody base. Um, I also really like the note of rosewood, which is what 
Palisander or Palisandro is here. Um, overall, though, I was underwhelmed by this. After the opening, which is a very nice dusty rose and rosewood kind of scent, um, it becomes very quickly something that I've smelled a lot before, which is kind of like a watery rose patchouli. And in a sense, it's not bad for what it is. In fact, it smells very good. It's just that I already have a couple of things like that, and this isn't really improving on the formula. So I'm glad I got a chance to try it, but uh, it didn't blow my socks off. Okay, so this next one is For Your Love by Maison Cyr, which is, um, I think it's Alberto Marias' uh, perfume house. I got this one because there had been a lot of hype about it uh, on YouTube. Also because I, I really like the name, I don't know why, but I can really be sold on a perfume just by the name, For Your Love. Um, another thing about it is that it's um, not a clone of Baccarat Rouge 540, but it's supposed to be similar and in that family, and some say an improvement. Um, it's kind of described as being Baccarat Rouge 540 with a big raspberry note up top. And um, I have it on a strip here. I've worn it once so far. Um, and I wasn't impressed, really. I mean, it smells really nice, but it doesn't smell better than Baccarat Rouge 540. And for some reason, I've resisted buying Baccarat Rouge 540, even though I really, really like it. I don't know why. I think um, somebody I know and who I love uh, dearly wears it, and it smells great on them. Um, so it kind of feels like their signature scent, and I can't steal it. Um, and then another piece of me just thinks it's like, um, so many people have it that it would be pointless for me to have it, but I really like it, and I probably should get it at some point. Anyway, uh, For Your Love is a very well done scent. It's musky, it's very big, you can tell it has a huge kind of trail and sillage. Um, I don't want to bash it because it actually, it smells really good. It smells like a fruity Baccarat Rouge 540 with less of a woodiness in the dry down, but it still has that musky, salty, jasmine, ambroxan, sparkliness uh, done very well and much better than a lot of the other dupes or clones that I've tried. Um, it's worth saying though that this thing is probably as expensive or more expensive uh, than is Baccarat Rouge 540. Anyway, For Your Love by Maison Cyr. Okay, so next up, I've been on a Cartier sampling binge. Um, a lot of it, I think, is because, I, well, I have La Treizième Heure by Cartier from the uh, Les Heures collection, their kind of like designer exclusive line, and I love that perfume. And I've sampled a few from that line that are really, really great. I'm really impressed by the work of Mathilde Laurent, who is the in-house perfumer there. But uh, on top of that, I kind of feel like Cartier is a slept on or underrated house. Uh, and I'm always kind of cheering for the underdog. So I decided I wanted to try a bunch of their scents. Mm. The first one that I'll talk about is actually kind of a disappointment. This is L'Enval de Cartier in the Eau de Toilette. Uh, this is a 15 ml, um, like at a spray. It's an official, I don't know, sample, but it's huge obviously. Uh, and these can be had for really cheaply online. Um, it's quite a nice presentation, um, but not very functional since it's completely round and will roll all over the place. So it comes with this little guy. Anyway, what does it smell like? Um, it smells kind of dated. I wasn't impressed with it. It was, it's a honey focused fragrance. And so I described the opening as kind of like a citrusy white wine honeyed kind of thing, which sounds weird and it is weird. And then as it dries down, it has some more traditionally masculine elements. Um, it has a big wormwood or artemisia note. Um, honestly, it reminded me of um, a lot of things that I don't like, like Versace's The Dreamer, uh, Polo Black, um, a few others that were just like Le Mal, like very classic, 90s men's fragrances. This feels very like men's cologne. Um, I will give it credit for 
smelling higher quality than those things and it is way more interesting smelling like it definitely comes out of left field from what you might expect um but i didn't like it next up on the cartier journey or i i don't know how to pronounce that um I think it's a hard word for Americans. No, that Cartier, you know, just... Really Banger from the brand of Cartier. But these are La Panther Parfum and La Panther Edition Soir. Um, so La Panther is kind of the first flagship fragrance that Mathilde Laurent launched for Cartier. And I actually haven't smelled the original, but it is a gardenia-based Chypra kind of thing. And um, I was interested to try these flankers because they have really interesting descriptions. So La Panthère Parfum is supposed to be like a more vintage, mossy take on La Panthère with a focus on osmanthus as opposed to the gardenia. And La Panthère Edition Soir kind of strips it down to uh, its gardenia and woody bass notes and adds just a shit ton of musks. Uh, it, they say animal notes. Um, so first I tried, uh, the Parfum, which also has the most beautiful bottle. I mean, I, I hate to be seduced by a bottle, but it has a beautiful bottle. Um, so I was a little bit disappointed. It smells really good. And it also smells really, really, really super creative for a very mainstream, like Macy's designer fragrance. Um, but I found myself wanting like a this perfume but with better ingredients so the osmanthus doesn't really give what i like from an osmanthus which is like a leathery tea tobacco kind of thing it's kind of just like a general apricotiness um and it just doesn't smell it smells good but it just doesn't smell like wow it, it just it has like a a lot of sweetness which i think is a giveaway that it's a designer it's like very very sweet at all levels um almost like rock candy um, the Edition Soir, which I don't even think was released in the U.S., um, is a little bit more interesting. Um, this one actually smells more vintage to me because it leans on something that's like a synthetic civet. And so it's got like a true kind of, I don't know, funkiness, especially at the top. And then it dries down to something that's like a creamier, still kind of funky gardenia with some woodiness. So it's interesting, but um, the bottle's not as pretty, and it's not something that I would go out of my, you know, way to have in my collection, because uh, I wouldn't get a lot of use out of it. Um, oh, the other thing I was going to say is that uh, the Parfum reminds me of kind of a cheaper um, Le Labo Ylang 49, so if you're in the market for something like that, definitely give La Panthère Parfum a try. Uh, I also bought samples of Cartier's Declaration d'un Soir, which is like a super hyped up fragrance from a few years ago that's now discontinued. Um, I haven't actually smelled it yet, so I just sprayed it here. This is going to be a, a true first impression, and I'm not going to say very much about it, but... Not blowing my socks off. It is a rosy men's fragrance with a woody generic backbone done okay and the final one i'll talk about from cartier is oud Vigny, which is from the les Ours voyageuse collection uh, which is their um designer exclusive line but it's like a subset of the designer exclusive line that's just based on oud they have um quite a few now actually it's like oud and musk oud and rose oud and oud Oud Vigny, Oud and Manth, Oud Radio. Um, I've tried a few of them and really liked them. Um, I actually tried Oud Vigny uh, at the Charles de Gaulle airport on my way home from Paris this summer. Uh, and I sprayed it on a card and I stuck it in a book I was reading. Um, and it smelled so freaking good. I thought about it a lot over um, the end of the summer. So I got a pack of 12 of these Udvini samples for a really good deal on eBay. And um, yeah, I'm still really impressed by this fragrance. So um, this is kind of what I was expecting from some of the others, which are, of course, you know, they're in the 
mainstream design rely from Cartier, so they don't use the same kind of materials. Um, and I think the theme from the rest of them is that they're very creative, but they don't really scratch that itch for me. Versus here in the Les Ours collection, uh, what I think Mathilde Laurent does really well is having really super creative ideas and executing them in a way that is very stylish. Um, she has a way of making things really ethereal, but also with heft. Um, I heard somebody else describing it as like playing with the volume on certain notes. Um, and Udvani is a really good example of how she works. It's a, a, a woody vanilla, but kind of like a knock your socks off woody vanilla. I don't think it's super oody, although other people have said that they get a lot of animalic notes from this. Um, it's a little bit animalic in the opening, something like civet or castorium, um, or maybe it's just an oud. Um, but as it dries down, uh, you get this really pretty golden, translucent, shining vanilla. Uh, and the longer you wear the fragrance, the those two concepts, the woodiness and the vanilla, kind of merge until it's blended as this one kind of unidentifiable vanillic wood accord, which I think is what a great perfume should be. It should be something that is unidentif unidentifiable as a set of notes, rather it is its own smell. Um, so I really enjoy Oud Vanille by Cartier. All right, two last things I'll talk about on my sample and samples journey. Um, I have been in love with Galo de Hermes for quite some time and have not pulled the trigger on a bottle. Um, I don't know why. I think I keep telling myself I already have a bunch of rose perfumes or, or you know, I haven't caught it on discount. And I don't know. I So I bought this four mil sample to tide me over. Uh, I haven't even broken it out yet and worn it because um, I already know I love it and just wanted to have it around for when I want to wear it. Um, but yeah, just I'm just throwing that out there because there's it's a, an example of a thing that I know that I really want to have in my collection, but I just haven't prioritized yet. Um, the other one is number 22 by Chanel. Um, I also have tried this on skin several times and enjoy it, um, but don't really have a need for a full bottle. So I got this mini, um, which they're so cute. I'm gonna try to pull it out to see if I can get it. There we go. So this like little, I don't know, four mil mini of number 22. Um, it was, so I just wanted to have it on hand for when I wanted to smell number 22. The, in general, I'll say that the Chanel's for me, although I understand them and I think that they're very beautiful, they just don't feel super wearable to me. Um, and I have nothing against florals. I wear a lot of women's targeted things, but the Chanel's, uh, I mean, I'm talking about the Les Exclusifs. Um, I really, really hate Chanel mainstream releases, but the Les Exclusifs feel so dressy um, in their kind of like powdery aldehydic-ness even more so than something like the Celine perfumes, which I've been trying lately, which are very stylish and very dressy, um, but they have a little bit of an edge to them. The Chanel's definitely feel like you have to be going somewhere to wear them, or that's how they feel for me. I live in California and I wear shorts all year round. Um, so as beautiful as they are, I just don't really have a need for them in my collection. Anyway, thanks for sticking with me through all of this rambling, y'all. Uh, looking forward to see you, seeing you on the next one.